Sound check. Sound check for the edit. Welcome to another video from Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service. Thank you for joining in. And today we have a Rockville Phenom RXD M4 in for repair. And I figured I'd bring you along with the journey here. Uh, so the output transistors do show a complete short uh, all the way across. Uh, so drain source uh, is 0.37 ohms. And these are the IRF, uh, they're, they're 640s. This is real common. This is a type four drive here. You have 274HC uh, ICs here with a uh, 4560 or a TL072 that you can use and a 219. So this is just your typical Type 4 drive card, and your drivers are underneath this card. Real common setup here. Um, same as all other Type 4 boards that drive the uh, 640s. So I show, like I said, a short across everything, which means something... Uh, failed pretty drastic on the output that caused them all to short simultaneously because all the drain sources are shorted. Uh, gate to source 20 ohms. I do have one over here, gate to source of what? Uh, 1.7 ohms. So that's my shortest or my lowest resistance value one there, uh, which we will go ahead and cut out, but I highly doubt that's going to resolve any issue with the board. So I cut that out and the resistance value. Oh, there we go. Look at that 9K. 9K. Okay, so that one transistor did open up this side. So there's no more short on that side. Now, what about this side? So I'm still showing 20 ohms gate source. So one of these should have a little lower resistance value. 20 ohms, 20 ohms, 20 ohms. Come on, where are you? 20 ohms, show yourself. 20 ohms. And oh, there it is. Uh, Get source, 0.53 ohms. So we're going to go ahead and cut that one out also. And that probably freed up the shorts uh, on the uh, transistor. So, yep, 9K. 9K. So I do believe what you're going to be seeing there are probably your pull-down resistors for the drive circuit. It looks like they're using 10 ohm resistors um, as gate resistors for the 640s, which is real common. So now, what causes this to fail? Over current, since the power supply is still okay, I am going to say over current. They don't show a short on the power supply. I do show a short on the power supply. Yes, so these use the 65 NF60s. So what is that? A 60 volt, 65 amp transistor uh, with gate resistors of 4 ohms. Three ohms. Ten ohms. Get resistors of oof, all over the place. 10 ohms. Of course, I can just look up the color code, but I do believe they're going to be 10 ohm resistors they're using to pull those down with. Or, excuse me, to uh, switch the gates on. So we will have to pull all the power supply transistors. They're going to go with 47 ohm gate resistors with 3205s. And then back to the output here. Oh, here you go. 
there's your problem right there. If we could see right down in there, we will find that this has a shorted inductor. So right here, you'll see the short and the inductor. So there's a spot there and probably on the other side, got a little bit of a rub spot right here. Uh, but this inductor obviously needs to come out, uh, get rewound or replaced. I do carry several inductors for these Type 4 boards, so that's not that's not a problem. So that is uh, reviewing this board here for you. And let's go ahead and pull this inductor out real quick quick like i'm going to switch views here just to give you more of a, a broad wide view of what i'm doing and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to pull this inductor <laughs> right on out because we're going to end up probably rewinding it or replacing it free this inductor up here so we can get it out of there and just remember to be careful because this stuff does get pretty hot Maybe I'll get this out of here. There it goes. There it is. All right. So, there's the inductor for you. Now, let's go ahead and go back to this view here and see what the damage is. Oh, yeah. And that is what causes an amplifier failure. That's from vibration damage. Uh, let's see, did they glue this down? No, they didn't. They did not glue this inductor down. So this inductor was able to just roll around in the board. So that causes shorts. And it looks like it even wore through on the bottom there are some marks down here where the windings shorted out so this whole inductor is probably in my opinion uh probably garbage it's uh it's shorted up pretty good so probably what it'll do is just replace this inductor um, I'll have to free it up good enough to get a uh, inductance reading on it, which I think I should be able to do. If you uh, wind your wires in a way that is away from the shorted parts, Should be able to kind of get somewhat of a reading off that. So let's go ahead and get some leads here and see what this thing tells me. If I can find my leads.
All right, so we're going to get the old trusty meter here. And we're going to hook up the, the leads to the inductor. What do you think we're going to get on this? We're going to get a short. Point zero five millihenries at one point zero eight ohms. Point oh five. I was gonna say point oh seven to point oh eight. Uh, but that's really a standard type four inductor, which I I have a whole bunch of these, so I will actually replace this. So that's a pretty much a breakdown of this particular amplifier is uh, short inductor replace the output transistors 06 or 640ns power supply is 3205 and replace the gate resistors with 47 ohm gate resistors uses a 494 drive uh, with uh, the 631 uh, drive transistors buffer transistors here so no doubt in my mind it will it'll support 3205s so i will uh, get this repaired and what i'll do is replace the inductor and be right back with you hello and welcome back to this rockville amplifier Again, just to recap, this is the Rockville Phenom RXDM4 amplifier. Uh, so this is, again, your typical Type 4 amplifier. Just as a quick review, um, I have removed the power supply transistors and all the gate resistors that I'm going to be replacing with 47 ohm gate resistors and 3205s. The amplifier originally had the 65 uh, NF06 transistors installed. And the pull down resistors are 200, looks like 220 ohms for the pull down. Uh, so one of the things I want to check before I go and put new uh, power supply transistors in and the gate uh, the gate resistors is to see if the drive works. So I'm going to go ahead and fire this board up real quick here, and uh, we're going to check the drive signal. And as you can see, we do have a square wave on both sides of the power supply drive. So uh, during the failure of the output transistor or the uh, power supply transistors, it did not damage the drive. No overshoots, no spikes in the signals, uh, no ringing. So that looks good. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and fit the new transistors in and fit new gate resistors. Get it all soldered in place and then uh, fire this board up. As you can see, I did pull, there was a shorted 640N on each side of the board. Can't quite see it. It's behind my scope image there. There it is right there for you. Uh, so these are the only two shorter ones. So now I don't show any shorts across the output section. So really we just need to fire up the power supply and see uh, if the output drive is still functional. So let me get the power supply transistors in and the gate uh, resistors, and I'll be right back with you. All right, I'm back. I've got the 3205s installed. I've got the 47 ohm gate resistors installed. Um, I just verified the resistance values of the output transistors, so I don't show any shorts there. Uh, so fingers crossed that the drive still works. Um, just to let you know on these Type 4s, if the, there is a problem in the drive, these things uh, do kind of pop like a little firecracker. So, just be warned. 
If one goes, it could be a little loud on the microphone. Never mind. Hold on. I know that sound. Hold on. Let me make sure I don't have any. Solder bridges. That is the sound of a solder bridge somewhere when I turn the power supply on and I hear the transformer pulsing because that's my power supply. Um, pulsing. Let me double check this otter joins here. Something is not quite right. Well, I'm not seeing any faults in the soldering, but I do see some uh, burnt traces. Oh, yeah. So it looks like I'm going to have to go through and repair some burnt traces here. And then figure out why. Pulsing the way it is. Yeah, I didn't notice this before, but it, I do. I, I have burnt traces on the bottom of this board. So uh, let me get those fixed real quick, and I'll be right back with you again. All right, so I found the short uh, in the power supply. So what I mean by short is if you take a resistance reading between the positive and negative terminals of the uh, input power here, I have a reading of 0.26 ohms, 24 ohms, which my meter leads are 0.22 ohms. So that's a dead short. Well, on this transistor right here, there is the smallest little piece of copper wire that is in between the drain and source. So, which it probably picked up from my mat as I was soldering the transistors in. Yep, sure enough, it was just a little piece of copper wire. Very, very small. I had to use magnifying glass just to see it. So now, if we take a resistance reading, I now show a rise in resistance uh, as the capacitors charge. So that's what we're looking for. All right. Give it some power. Give it some power. Oh, that's looking much better. Now, will the output explode? Hopefully not. So in this instance, what I'm going to do is use the thermal imaging camera here. And I'm just going to watch the output transistors as I slowly pulse the power supply. And I'll give you a little different view of how I do this. Uh, so I have my remote here. This is my 10 amp uh, current limited supply uh, that doesn't use a foot pedal. So I use, I just use my little alligator clip here on the remote lead. And I just touch the remote lead and I do get a green light. Starting to see a little bit of warmth on some of the components, which is looking good. Looks like I've got, what is that? That's going to be a pull down. I got something warming up over here. Let me just oh, pinpoint it here. It's the pull down resistor. The pull down resistor is heating up just a little bit. Now this amplifier does not use a relay. 
So it's kind of hard to tell when you have a, a functional drive because you don't hear the relay click. So what I'm going to do is uh, go ahead and hook up my oscilloscope probe to just the gate of one of these transistors without shorting it out. I'm just going to go right on the gate resistor. I like to find one that does is not the negative referenced one, so we're just going to go ahead and put it on the I call it the high side part of the drive and fire it up. Making sure nothing's overheating. We're looking pretty decent. I may change the value of those pull-down resistors, though. They're getting a little, a little warm. But as you can see, as you can't see on the uh, scope image there, we do have our switching signal. So there it is. Now, remember, I am missing two output transistors on the board, so I do have to replace uh, two of these transistors to uh, make this, not two of them, I'm going to replace a full bank, um, because, again, as a good rule of thumb, you want to replace all parallel transistors. And these are the 640s, which are, I mean, I've got hundreds of 640 ins. So, I mean, putting a new bank of transistors in is, is really nothing, com you know, when it comes to cost, if you uh, have transistors in bulk. So the drive does work. That's exactly what we're looking for. Um, the pull-down resistors are 220 ohm pull-down resistors, which typically I think you want to be... You might, I don't know, might want to be a little higher on the pull down. Let's check the gate drive signal on the uh, power supply. And let's see how well it's pulling that signal down. So you can see on the screen there that there's very very little ringing in the signal just there's a little bit of noise um, but again based on this design i would probably expect a little bit of noise i, I did switch from the 65 n 06 or the yeah the 65 06 transistors to the, to the 3205s uh, which the 3205s were great with this kind of topology on the drive uh, and it is getting pulled down pretty hard to ground, as you can see. So I'm not really seeing a lot of issues when it comes to uh, dry, driving these transistors. Let's go ahead and check the other side. We'll make sure all the sides are not ringing. Not seeing much uh, cross conductance, so that's when two trans or transistors are on at the same time. Not seeing a lot of that. Looks great. Yeah, I'm just not seeing a lot of issues uh, with this drive in particular. Sorry, my. Trigger's got a little bit of a glitch in it there. That's a pretty decent looking uh, drive for 3205s. And of course these 3205s have zero heat on them. So I don't believe there's any cross conduction going on in those transistors. And the 640Ns, you got to be careful because I don't know how, uh, how well the pull-down resistors are for the rails. And there's no heat on those 640s. 
So I'm going to replace the outputs with new 640Ns. So basically I'll have new power supply, new output section. Um, I did replace the inductor. Uh, previously I did show you that it was shorted out. So I did replace it with a new inductor and we'll get it, we'll get it all glued down. And it's at uh, 0 0.05 millihenries. I think it's millihenries. So uh, that's where we're at on this. I will get the outputs replaced and uh, get this back in the heat sink and give it a thorough testing. Uh, so that is a quick rundown of the uh, Rockville Phenom RXDM4 amplifier. Again, typical Type 4 style board. The uh, two 74HCO2 ICs, the 219 and the uh, 072 or the 4560 uh, card. You'll find these on a lot of amplifiers. With the optic couplers here and your auxiliary uh, voltage regulators. So, simple, common design. So I do thank you guys for watching. If you have any comments, please leave them down below. I'm always more than happy to help assist you guys. Uh, I, I have pretty much everything you need to fix amplifiers. If you have questions about parts, I'm, uh, I'm here for you guys. So thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one.